Through the course of this series, I have now attempted to make a fairly wide variety of everyday objects. And while their functionality and taste generally turn out relatively decent, their overall appearance is usually a bit lacking. With this next series, I'm going to be focusing on specifically making products that are used to improve your outward appearance. Cosmetics. Cosmetics is a very broad term, covering everything from makeup to moisturizers, hair product, shampoos to perfume. Most people will use at least one cosmetic product every day. But the main type of products people think of with cosmetics has a very sharp cultural gender divide. Today, around 84% of women regularly wear makeup, where for men, it's basically considered taboo outside of film or theatrical makeup. But that is a trend that is showing signs of possibly changing. I myself have only worn makeup once in my life, when I was flown out to New York to appear on The Rachel Ray Show. Backstage, they did a very light touch-up for his drug onto set for Rachel to make me a sandwich. Dive in, I hope you like it spicy. <laughs> You're the coolest. With such a limited personal experience, the world of cosmetics is incredibly foreign to me. And with a largely male audience, it makes this topic a bit risky to cover. But with over 100 million cosmetic consumers in the US alone, this $56 billion industry is something I want to understand and dissect better. And what better way than attempting to make it myself? Cosmetics is an art that some go as far as to theorize dates as far back as the very origins of our species. In the process of pursuing this topic, I'll be working with a unique set of ingredients and a surprising amount of chemistry, and this series itself will open the door for future episodes, dealing both with pigments and some of the advanced chemistry that I'll be starting here. But first, knowing the limits of my own knowledge, I turned to Caroline at the Elixiry Cosmetic House to learn more about the history of cosmetics. Cosmetic, under the FDA definition, is anything that is used for beautification, so it can change the appearance. So everything except for soap. And the only reason that soap is not classified as a cosmetic is actually a political one. In the 1930s, the uh, soap lobby said we shouldn't be included because we also make laundry soap. So they lobbied successfully to be excluded from cosmetic regulations. So everywhere else in the world, soap is a cosmetic, except for the United States. So lotions, creams, any, uh, like uh, body wash is actually a cosmetic. So by that definition, a lot of men do wear cosmetics. A lot of men wear cosmetics. Most of them do because you use shampoo, you use uh, lotion, you use, you know, uh, all kinds of stuff. Makeup has been used for millennia, um, and it's been used for a lot of religious purposes. Today, it's used either as a form of personal expression, or it's used to make yourself look healthier, and, uh, you know, and looking healthier gets you a lot more social and economic benefits. So when you look better, you get more in life. Presently, right now, we kind of think of cosmetics as something that just women wear, but historically, has it always been that way? Absolutely not. Uh, both men and women have worn makeup throughout history, both for religious reasons or for just general purposes. Some points in like European history, uh, only men were allowed to wear makeup and women were forbidden from wearing it. And there's a tribe in Africa today that still the men use makeup and the women do not. So our ideas of makeup being feminine are, are actually pretty modern. Is that changing? Is there a trend that's challenging that? There is a, a little bit. Um, you're starting to see it in Asia. You're starting to see it especially in Korea where beauty is a huge thing that men are starting to wear makeup. Uh, it's more subtle than the makeup that women wear, but it, it's definitely coming back. So do you think uh, cosmetics for men is going to become the next trend? I, I think it'll be a tough sell for a lot of people, but I think eventually, yes. I think that cosmetics for men will come back and it'll get the same cycle again. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to write an article for a local magazine where I actually got to share some of my early research I had done for this series. However, now talking to someone who actually makes cosmetics, I learned I had mistakenly quoted some millennial old propaganda. The Egyptians used crocodile poop in their cosmetics, is that true? No, no, that's not true at all. That, that came from a, a comment by Pliny the Elder. And he had never been to Egypt, and he didn't particularly like the Egyptians either. And so it's kind of a good way to insult your political enemies. Actually, chemically, using crocodile poop and eyeliner wouldn't work at all. Well, historically, makeup has been very controversial. It's used for religion to control people because, you know, looking better, you know, helps you control the masses. You look amazing. You look, have these crazy eyes on, and you look like a god. And then it's also alternately been banned by religions. And so that, that sort of social pressure between has created a lot of a lot of uh, tension around makeup a lot of a lot of uh, fear around makeup is it true that like a lot of cosmetics was dangerous like with the lead and like the foundation and stuff that would make people sick at one time yes at one time they would put a heavy coating of lead on their face and a, 
a lot of times they would use that heavy, thick, white makeup to cover up smallpox. So I'm interested in making makeup entirely from scratch. So I assume I probably have to go back to some more ancient sources. Do you have any suggestions of different cosmetics I can make from scratch? Yeah, you can make uh, some foundation for your face. Uh, you could make some lipstick. Mm -hmm. You could make some blusher. Uh, you could even try your hand at some eyeliner or eyeshadow. Most cosmetics are waxes, oils, and pigments, uh, especially lipsticks. So you're going to need some kind of wax to, to stiffen it so that it stays in a shape and also helps it stay on the lips. Um, and an oil that's going to help it spread and then a pigment that's going to give you the color. You'll need to get that for most things. For foundation, you can do it a couple of different ways. Usually it's an emulsion, mm -hmm. but you can also do it the same, a very similar way. It'll just be really greasy. Thanks to Caroline. I now have a decent idea of how to get started and what I'll need in this next quest for making cosmetics from scratch. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and check out other content we have covering a wide variety of topics. Also, if you've enjoyed these series, consider supporting us on Patreon. We are largely a fan-funded channel and depend on the support of our viewers in order to keep our series going. Thanks for watching.